right, good, so welcome. I'm Leslie Kristen, and I am excited to be here. It looks like a lot of people are interested in learning custom blending, so it's a really fun part of Cara Cosmetics. Uh, I'm gonna share a little bit about myself in case you don't know me, and just a little bit of a background, and then the class will be about an hour. And definitely what I'd love to do is uh, I'm going to stop at times so we can ask questions. I definitely want it to be interactive class. So you can turn your cameras on, want to see your gorgeous faces. And also um, we're going to make it fun and easy. There are no silly questions. Uh, some of you may be advanced makeup artists. Some of you may, this might be your first time. So would love to learn a little bit more about you too. And um, so thank you so much for being here today. I am with Rachel. Rachel's gonna be our model today. You might've seen her on some of our other uh, users a model for our Ruby look and our new creams that we have that we've launched as well. So she's got a gorgeous face and a great skin. But that doesn't mean that all of our clients are going to be like that. <laughs> so we're going to chit chat about that. Um, just to give you a little brief background about myself and if you don't know about Cara Cosmetics. So Cara um, is, it means face in Spanish. It, uh, if you speak Spanish, the word cara means face. And a little bit about myself. I, at a young age, moved to Spain at a, uh, 10 years old, and I lived there until I was about 20 years old. And then I moved back to the States. I, in a brief way, I guess, just to kind of share a bit, uh, moved back to the States, even though I am an American, I am a native of, of California, of San Francisco. And I loved, I've always loved makeup. So I'm sure some of you can relate to the same thing. I ended up getting my cosmetology license. And then I, after that, shortly after I was in my early 20s, started to freelance and then got into film and television, started doing makeup. And about 13 years into that process is when I decided that I wanted to start a makeup line. So I started researching a lot of different manufacturers and testing my products on the actors and the films that I was working on. And so our motto is that we test on actors and not on animals. And actually, Rachel is an actor, so it is true what we're saying. <laughs> we do test on actors. Um, our products are obviously cruelty-free. Uh, since the product line, uh, then I also started Studio Cara, which we're here now, which is also our Cara Makeup Academy. And so we actually work with live clients here. We're based in Maitland, Florida, which is like down the street from Orlando. Uh, we're in Central Florida. And uh, this is our flagship studio. So I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. And a lot of the things that we do here, we test them out before we even launch them to our wholesale clients or out to the public. And what's good about that is that um, being a makeup artist, you know, one of the one of the things that was really important for me, and this was even before uh, the internet, well, maybe not before the internet, but before Instagram, YouTube, all of that, my film and television background was important for me to design a line that would be camera ready. And here we are, everyone's on camera. We're teaching on camera now. Uh, so that was always something that was really important for me. And then also that I could work on any skin tone color and any and in any age as well. So I think that as a makeup artist, those are things that you have to master, you have to understand. And also, um, we're going to start off with foundations like in this class and we're going to share with you, you know, that this is like, this is the basis, right? You have to start with a beautiful foundation. You need to also understand how to work with what you have and what you want to achieve. So that's what we're going to go into. And I'd love to, if you have questions, please um, put those in the chat. I see that we have something in the chat. 
and I can answer those as we go, but I'd also love to meet you in person as well. So um, let me just check this real quick before we start here. I'm going to open up our chat. Um, can you please talk about men's foundation and makeup for a friend? Um, men's foundation. Absolutely. Yeah, we can definitely talk about men's foundation. That would be great. Um, I've worked a lot with men and I think that men are also starting to use more foundation. You know, it's kind of becoming a little bit more normal, especially if you're on camera, not even if you're on camera. So yes, we can definitely answer that question. Um, and let's see here. Okay. So perfect. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to start with, I like to demo as well as talk about the products. Um, and I know Mickey is one of our new retailers. So welcome, Mickey. It's so nice to have you here. And I think that, um, are you actually in your studio right now? Yes, so. I am. Give me a, a thumbs up. Are you in your studio or you're at home? You're at home. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay, cool. So I am going to be showing you um, a couple of different things. We're going to start off with, I just want to talk a little bit about, and I'm going to use Rachel as an example too. And she will be, um, let's see, she is going to also... Um, show, you know, I'm going to show you one side with a high coverage and then one side with the sheer coverage. So you can test for yourself what you like. Now, uh, Cara Cosmetics, we have three different types of foundations. And so there is our high coverage foundation, which is the Perfecta Base. And this is the one I wear. So I wear this daily. It is a high coverage foundation and it comes in eight different shades. And I'm going to share with you also how to understand our shading system too. And again, like if you have questions, I am kind of looking at the chat. So I'm multitasking here a little bit, which I think we're all kind of used to that. And uh, so the Perfecta Base is a cream foundation. I'm going to hold this up if you're not familiar with it. And so it looks, you know, when you look at it, you're going to go, wow, that's, it's kind of thick. Um, and it does, it does appear that way. What I love about for Perfecta Base is there's a couple of things that I love about it. First of all, this foundation will last you probably two, if not three times longer than our Hydrolux, which is this foundation right here. This is our sheer to medium. Not to say that one is better than the other, it just depends on what you're wanting to achieve. Now, Perfecta Base, I'm gonna, um, this is an oil-free foundation. So for those of you that are, that need more coverage, that wanna cover imperfections, I have hyperpigmentation. I grew up in Spain on the beach. I earned every freckle and spot that I have. And um, so it's, I need something that has a little bit more coverage. Uh, it also, I like to, I'm gonna move this over just a second here. Um, and okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, so one thing about it is that you're going to use a very little amount of product. This is going to be, if any of you, I know some of you have already taken our Car Makeup Academy classes, which is great. Um, also, um, you have maybe used the product or maybe this is your first time using the product. So we're going to kind of show you a little bit of a difference there. Uh, so you, you want to know that you want to have a full coverage foundation. Any makeup artist is going to need a variety of products. Um, this is going to be our sheer to medium. It comes in a pump and it also um, is a, a water-based foundation, and you, but you're not going to be able to build as much as you're going to be able to build with Perfecta to get that higher coverage. So 
Um, this one I would say is probably our most popular, the Hydrolux. And we actually have 12 different shades in this. So we have more shades now. This is our newer line. And so I'll share with you that as well. Um, and then we also have, which I'm not going to go into too much today, but we have our mineral-based compacts. And you can sell, see this one has been well used. Sorry about that. <laughs> but this is a powder foundation. Now, when it comes to men, this is what I use on men. I do not use a liquid. I do not use a perfecta base. I use our mineral-based compact, especially like news anchors, actors, um, even, you know, a lot of younger people that um, maybe might have issues with their skin. The mineral-based compact is going to be great because it's, it's, um, it's going to actually, the minerals actually help the skin to heal, uh, but you're not using something that's going to have oils in it or to create any kind of congestion. Um, I also love to use this on the body. So if I'm doing bridal, I will continue the foundation down into the decollete area, or um, you can also build with this. You can layer uh, with, let's say, the Hydrolux, you want to get a little bit more coverage. You can also layer and set in your foundation with this. It is going to build it. So I will talk a little bit about our powders as well. Um, I like to, I like for anyone to look like they have nothing on, that their skin is just really beautiful. That's my style. That's my goal. Um, I think most people like that. And um, I think, and I'm kind of excited that the trend, you know, of Instagram where you, or YouTube, where you see people grab a foundation that's not even close to their skin tone and put it all over their face and put it heavy. I absolutely despise that. I don't think it looks good on anybody. Um, so really makeup is not about pouring layers of product on. It's really about making your skin just look really flawless and, and natural. Um, so perfect. Um, yeah, men can use liquid. Uh, I just find that most men don't, you know, I think that the, you know, the mineral based compact is going to be a nice finish and it's going to look a lot more natural. So that's just my opinion. You know, you can do whatever you'd like, but um, in my years of experience, that's what most makeup are. And I have tons of friends of mine in the film business that use our mineral based compact on all kinds of, um, you know, male actors too. So, okay, let's get started. Uh, da, da, da. And yes, we are recording our session. So we will be uh, we will have this available on a replay. So if some people that I know we had a lot of people register, um, you will be getting an email later on with um, the link if you want to rewatch it because you can't get enough of us, I know. So it's a lot to take in all in once, but uh, it'll be good. Okay, so what I'm going to do, Rachel, what do you have on your face right now? I have Glow Savior on uh -huh. and... Um, it's probably melted off by this point, but yeah. I had a little, uh, like With a little, skin cream, a little cream blush. Oh, okay. 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 Perfect. And there's a little mascara left. Over. All righty. <laughs> so I'm going to start with cleansing her face and I'm going to do it kind of quickly. Um, and I'm going to do it with a couple things here. Um, the, the prep of the face is going to be really important. Um, I actually love to just use something that's going to be kind of lightweight as well, but um, I'm going to use, especially as a makeup artist, just having our soothing toner. It, this is kind of um, across the board since it is more of a calming type of uh, toner. What I'll do, if I don't want to get into like doing the cleansing and all of that, I will just cleanse her face with the toner. And so I'm just going to grab a little bit of the toner. And we have uh, one ounce, one ounce bottles. I love these for the kit. 
but our six ounce would be comes with a spritzer. So if you're doing this at home, it just feels really nice to just spritz over the face. And also uh, it, a nice, you know, a nice thing to do too is if you want more of a dewy look, you can spritz after the, uh, the foundation application, kind of like a setting spray to just give like a touch of that dewiness. And that looks really pretty. Yeah. So as you can see, you know, Rachel has really nice skin and, but let's, you know, let's talk about it a little bit like the, um, and let's see here, I'm going to let's see if I can video settings. Um, okay, let me, there we go. Okay. Hopefully that has, and I just want to make sure that we have that focus. That's good. You know how it is with Zoom sometimes, that focus. I'm just going to bring it in a tiny bit more so you can see details there. Okay, perfect. <laughs> we can hear our neighbors talking. Maybe there's a real estate company next door, so maybe <laughs> they just got a deal. <laughs> We just heard a really loud, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they can probably they hear us. us. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Love it. All right. So I just cleansed a little bit, took off any residue. And now at this point, if you want to, I love, um, and it is our collagen quench. This one right here, let's pull that back. There we go. Uh, it is a super lightweight collagen serum and it has hyaluronic acid. So it's just gonna be a really super, super light hydrator. And it's just gonna absorb right into the skin. As you know, if you do a lot of makeup and they're not your regular clients, that you really don't know kind of what situation you're going to get right with with someone's skin. So having some products that are going to be these quick fixes are going to be really, really important. Um, I'm going to share with you before we get into our pigments, I do want to share with you our perfect moisture serum. And this is actually one of the products that you are going to be able to use as a hydrator. And this product was designed really to add hydration into the foundations, but you could also use it as a primer or as a spot primer. So, and this is a good tip for men because a lot of times men can be dehydrated. You know, they're they're shaving and whatnot. So their skin is great here because it's that constant exfoliation, but maybe around the eyes or the forehead or other areas, they're more dehydrated. They might have more lines. So the Perfect Moisture Serum, it is a clear serum. So you can see it, it actually kind of looks, it looks like an oil, but it isn't. It's not an oil. It actually has glycerin, it has sodium PCA, it is an oil-free hydrator, but let's say if I wanted to give her a little bit more dewiness, I could just take a tiny bit of this, or you could even brush it on with your brush, but I love to mix this with Perfecta Base, so I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. So the next thing is I'm going to start off with, and let me know, again, I think you guys are asking some good, um, some good questions. Let's see, do you use airbrush? Do I use airbrush? You get, our products are not airbrush products. So I'm not gonna really get into airbrushing in this class. I'm just gonna stick to um, teaching the foundations. And let's see here. Okay, so. The next thing is I absolutely love our Glow Savior. I love this underneath because you always want to use a sunscreen. So this is our SPF 30. 
if someone has great skin, I would probably recommend not using this. I keep on grabbing the one that doesn't have product in it. <laughs> um, our Glow Savior. This has an SPF 30, but you can also use it as a moisturizer, as a sunscreen, and it's going to give you a little bit of shimmer. Now, Rachel has been loving it so much that she doesn't even wear foundation anymore. <laughs> like she just wears straight Glow Savior. It has a little bit of a tint and it's going to give you the protection. I don't know if you can see, can you see like how it's giving her a little bit of a glow versus this other side here? It's a little bit flatter. I'm so sorry. I think this, the, the, let's see here. There we go. I'm going to bring Rachel. I'm zooming in. That's good. There we go. Does that help you there? Okay, cool. So I'm going to put the product on and so you can see that it's subtle. So you can use this on any age. You know how some ladies, they'll say, oh, I heard that I'm not supposed to wear shimmer after the age of 53 and a half. Well, that's a bunch of malarkey. <laughs> You can definitely do shimmer. Um, it just, this is not glitter. This is not chunky, but having a little bit of like that, you know, iridescence or just that, that glow makes your skin gorgeous and you're protecting it. And it's a sunscreen too. So um, it has great ingredients in it and it just uh, absorbs right into the skin. So I love that. Uh, let's see here. Okay. I'm going to start off with our, I'll start off with Perfecta Base. And so share with me what, um, do you think that she has more of an olive skin tone or a pinkier skin tone? Or is she, does, have, does she have a darker skin tone? So pop that in the chat. I'd love to know what what do you guys see on your end with her? So I'm gonna show you. Okay, I'm gonna show you the shades that we have. So we have the N shade, which is. What I like to do is I will just grab a little Q-tip. I'll open up the foundation and we have an N, which is our neutral, okay? So the neutral is has a little bit more of a pink. I'm gonna strike that right here. And I hope that you can see that right there. Can you see where I just striped this? So that's our N. This is actually an N2. Um, let me compare it so you guys can see this. And if you have foundations and you want to go along at the same time, but so see this one has a little bit more yellow to it. Can you guys see that? So, okay, yeah. So this one is more of a neutral, it has a little bit more pinkiness. This one has more yellow. So this, the yellow one is our O series for olive. That's gonna have more yellow. And I'm gonna put a little bit more here. I'm gonna put it a little exaggerated so you can kind of see the difference. Can you see that on your end? The the foundation. So here is our here is our yellow foundation, and then here is our neutral foundation. So you can see how that yellow is really kind of popping from her skin. It's not blending in as well as as this one. Can you? Mickey, can you give me a thumbs up if you can kind of see what I'm talking about? 
Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so what we would want to do is in this case now, G, I, I personally don't think that we need to go any darker. I think this, this foundation, you can already see that her skin is a little bit lighter then it might blend in pretty well on your end. This one is way too yellow. Um, so actually I'll, I'll just try, let me grab the N3 so you can see our dif the difference in here. So the N3, So that's the N2, that's the O1, here's an N3. Can you guys see that one on her skin? So we're getting darker now. Hopefully you can kind of, I know the light is pretty bright, so. Let me just try turning this off for a second to see if that might help. Does that help at all? Or can you, it does? Yeah? Okay. All right. So here, this is a darker shade of foundation. Um, that's the N3, the O, which is the yellow one, and then that's the N2. Now on my end, it's pretty clear that one is definitely, let me see if I can get in there, darker than the other. I think on camera, it is a little bit more difficult to see that. So let's see here, there we go. Um, but this one is definitely, we're getting a little too dark, especially because of the neck area. She is definitely lighter. So if I were to put some of this N3, on her neck. Can you see the difference there? Where it really is kind of popping out. It's it's orangey, it looks very orange, and it looks darker. So I'm going to take both of those foundations off. And I'm going to start with the N2. Now, I just want to show you also um, with the, let's see here. I want to show you that with the um, O series, oh, the bronze series as well. So we do have our bronze series, which obviously this is not even close to hers, but you can see that it comes in the bronze series too. So this is going to be getting into your darker uh, African American towns. And we also have a BR4 in that too. So that's going to be our darkest shade. So you definitely have, um, you definitely have some very deep skin tones, uh, colors for skin tones. And the BR3 has more yellow, the BR4 has more darkness, uh, I'm sorry, more redness in it. Okay, so I took that one off. What I do is I like to take the shades off that don't work. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave that little stripe of the one that I'm picking. So that's the N2. And if you can see what I'm talking about with the N2, I have, because I'm going to go back in. Hopefully you can see this here. Okay. So I like to let it sit on the skin for just a little bit before I go in and custom blend it because once it dries, you know, sometimes people, their um, foundation will change a little bit. You know, it might oxidize a tiny bit. So you kind of want to give it a couple of minutes. And then I can see in here versus it being wet to this area that's already dried a little bit more, it is pulling a little bit of warmth on her skin. So what I see is that I'm going to grab a little, a little palette and I'm going to work off of my palette. Okay. 
So I'm going to take the foundation right on the right on the palette here. And I am going to, so I'm going to look at what the foundation is doing. Now, if you were at the department store, they would go, oh my God, the shade is perfect and sold, right? <laughs> That's how they would do it over there. But since you have the option to custom blend, then we can definitely do that. So let's talk a little bit about color theory now and the different pigments that we have. So this is where the pigments come in. So we have a lilac, a purple. We have a brown. So the lilac, sorry, let me go back to the lilac again. So the lilac, what that's going to do, if you understand color theory a little bit, it is on the opposite side of yellow and an, an orange. So any kind of warmth, it's going to neutralize a little bit. Um, brown, this is our brown pigment. This one's obviously going to darken. The red is going to add red, is going to add. And this one, I usually, it's, it's rare that I use it for lighter skin tones. It's more often that I use it for African-American skin tones um, or maybe Indian skin tones. When it's starting to look a little bit more sallow, uh, then we have the white pigment. So the white is obviously going to lighten your foundation. The green, green is also going to neutralize redness. It's on the opposite side of red. And then yellow, yellow can also add warmth into a foundation. Um, I would say for the most part, I don't use yellow to neutralize something. Um, I'm going to use it more to add some warmth and some yellow into a foundation. Um, for those of you that do hair, you know, you understand color theory, but the difference is, you know, with hair is that a lot of times you're really trying to like cut through a particular color where when you're custom blending on someone's skin, you still want them to look alive. So, you know, you still want them to have some warmth in the skin because the skin has all different types of colors in it. So... With that said, okay, what color do you think with the pigments would I use to neutralize some of the warmth on the in the foundation? Do you guys know? Do you want to give it a shot? Like put it in the chat. Like what what pigment would you use to neutralize to neutralize that? Because I'm going to have you, I'm going to have you share with me. What do you think? I'm going to use a spatula to mix it. Do we have any answers? Dun, da, da. Anybody want to give it a shot? Okay, we've got red. Okay, so if you're, if you're, okay. Which one? I can't hear you, Mickey. Oh, let me, hold on. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, so which one did you think? Lavender. Lavender. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, lavender. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're if you're neutralizing warmth, which is going to be yellowy red, you wouldn't want to add more red to it. You would want to use a color that's on the opposite side of the color wheel. And these are things that we teach in our business and beauty course because we get really in depth with all of this. Um, but um, you can always go online and just Google color, color wheels, and there's thousands of them out there, and you can see. So, okay, great. So let's go ahead. Now, it could be, right, it could be that we could use a lilac, 
but also to neutralize redness would be green. So, um, Mickey, why did you not choose green versus purple or lilac? Um, I chose the lilac to counteract too much yellow. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes the green can be a little tricky because what it'll do, so I just put a little, um, I put a pump of the of the lilac in here and I'm going to grab, I mean, a little teeny tiny bit, okay? And I'm going to mix that into the foundation. So just, I mean, you're not going to definitely put that whole pump in there. And one of the exercises, uh, Mickey, is what you can do, and I think it's in the um, in the foundations course, but one of the things you could do is just, I like to grab a, like seven different dots and I'll put, you know, of the same foundation. So I'll put, you know, like seven dots of N2, and then I'll put a little squirt of each one of the pigments, and then I'll mix the pigment into each one of the little different dots. And then that way you can see exactly what our pigments do and how intense they are. Because I know that you um, have worked with a different type of, of product line. So get ready because our pigments are really intense. You do not have to use a lot. Um, okay, so I mixed that up a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it out on her. So we've got, well, you can definitely see that it took away some of that warmth and it brightened it up a little bit. And I would let that sit there. So another thing also is that if you're going to, let's say um, you need to color correct, but it also maybe is too dark. Always color correct first. And then, because sometimes when you color correct, like in this case, it made it go just a little bit lighter. So you might need, you, you might not need to lighten the foundation if that makes sense. So it's fun. Um, I actually kind of love it. I think I think that I think we're pretty much on the money there. I'm going to take the other two off and take a little bit of my toner just to remove that. I think it's great. Now because she has such pretty skin and she really doesn't need much foundation at all, I like to apply our foundation. And I would say this is a really nice seller as well is our Kabuki brushes. So you can retail these brushes along with the foundation. And the reason why people love these so much is because it's almost, and here you go, Amy P. <laughs> you were talking about airbrushing. This will give you probably the closest look to airbrushing without having to deal with airbrush. Um, so what I do is I grab a little bit of product and I like to apply the foundation. And I mean, you see what a teeny tiny bit I'm using and buffing this out. Just a little bit. What happens, people, if they use too much of this product, it's going to look cakey. It's going to look heavy. So always, and always work in areas because it dries quickly. It's matte. Um, and I don't necessarily use it right up under the eye. I like to use my concealer because it is a little bit more matte. Um, so I, I leave that area there. And then again, you can see how much I still have left. And 
Love it. So pretty. And I just kind of buff this out. Anywhere like under the nose area. So can you guys see the difference between this side here and then this side there, right? So here, if you want that lighter, um, sorry, not lighter, if you want that just flawless look, I mean, her skin looks like porcelain right now, especially on camera, you can see how pretty it looks. Like it's just poreless and, and just really, really super smooth. Um, this and matte. Now, the, what's going to happen, though, with Perfecta Base is that, as you can see, it took away all that natural pinkiness that she has in her skin. It's going to cover up those little imperfections as well. So if you don't want, um, if you don't want as much, you know, coverage, then you could always apply it with a damp sponge and then do the same kind of thing. So it's gonna kind of give you a little bit more lightness in there. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, okay, perfect. So the next one, so now I'm gonna show you the Hydrolux foundation. Um, the shades, we've added uh, a lot more shades to the Hydrolux. So with the, I'm going to scoot over here real quick. With the Hydrolux, we have the N series, kind of like I showed you before. We also have the O series. So we've got the N, we have an N1, which is super, super light. And let's see here. Um, and if you're kind of wondering, this is our old packaging, the black. And our new packaging is the silver. It's just we we haven't updated all of our testers. Um, but we have the N1. Then we have the O also, so the olive, the more yellow. And then we um, I created a couple of combinations. So we have an NO. So for example, our NO2 right here. This one is really popular because it's it's... Now you're getting, instead of custom blending, you'll find that you're gonna have to custom blend a lot less with the Hydrolux than the Perfecta Base because um, I created the new shades that are NO. So you've got people like her that have a little bit of yellow, but also have that pinkiness. Um, and then we also have NW. So NW, and I'll show you, is going to be, that's warm. So that one is for, for example, like people that like this, this uh, maybe like the sun a little bit more, you know, have a little bit more warmth into their skin. So let me swatch these so you can kind of get an idea of these foundations. And let's see here, here we go. So I'm gonna take off the Perfecta Base. How did you like that? Does that seem like that's going to be something easy for you to do? And I'm going to show you um, after I'm done with the perfect with the um, Hydrolux, I'll also show you how to custom blend the bottle, so you can know how to do this for your clients. Now, of course, you're going to do this, you know, as a professional if you're watching this, or if you're just you know someone interested in custom blending. Um, you know, your professional would custom blend the foundation for you. You're not going to buy the pigment and then mix it every single time you're putting on foundation. People get afraid of that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's start. I'm going to start with the N1. So you can take a look at that. And the N1 is very, very fair. And this one comes with a little, you know, a little pump like that as well. So I'm going to, sorry, we got a lot of things going on here. Okay. 
Okay. So I put a little bit of the N1. I'm also going to put on my palette, I'm going to put an O2, just so you can kind of see the difference. And then I'll uh, show you the NO2. Scroll this. Yes, that's N1, O2, and then NO2. So it's a combination. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Now oh, what's happening? Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay, so let me grab a couple of Q-tips. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm going to show you the N1. So this is going to be the N1 right there. So you can see how that one's pretty light. This is the O. You can see how that one's a little bit more yellow. And I'm going to take the NO, which is a combination of the two. This one's definitely going a lot darker on her. I hope you can see that. Yeah. Let me see if um see if I can kind of block the light a little bit over here if that'll help. There you go. Does that help to see the stripes there? Okay. Good. So you can see that they're going from darker um. I'm going to scoot your face a tiny bit there. Yeah. So the N1, the O2, and then the NO2. So it kind of gives you a little bit of dimension in there to kind of see. Of course, um, in here, it's definitely a lot, a lot darker. I'm going to do something real quick here. I'm going to take this. See if I can take this banner and it might help with just blocking a little bit of the light. So we can, that might help a tiny bit there. Not as much glare. Does that help? Did that help with the, or are you still kind of, let's see that darkness. Okay. All right. Oops. All right, perfect, good. Um, so let's see here, we're going to do, I'm gonna take those shades off and I've got so many products in here, sorry guys. <laughs> Very beautiful rainbow. <laughs> okay, so this one's definitely way too dark. Um, this, between these two, this one is very warm. It's looking a lot more yellow. This one here is, um, it's, it's actually looking a little too pink on her skin. And so in that case, I still think this one is definitely too orange and it's a little darker. So I would probably say that the N1 is going to be, um, her best choice, even though it's actually showing up a little bit too, um, it's just always showing up, a, it's still showing up a little bit too orange. So in this case, uh, Mickey, do you want to, do you want to give it a whirl and see which pigment you think we would use? Um, and it's pulling a little too orange. It is, yeah, let me, let me put a little bit more on here if I can. Yeah, let's try that. It's, it's easy to see which ones are lighter or darker, but it's hard to see the exact color. Too. I know, yeah, it is, it is. A lot of window and glare in here, it's too at the parlor, so it makes it hard. Yeah, can you see that a little better there? 
Yeah. It looks kind of light, huh? But it's, I don't know if you can kind of see the warmth as it dried. And again, we're getting pretty picky here, which is good. Like that's what people love. If you can match it exactly, it's great. So it has a little bit, just a hint of a pinkiness versus her skin. Okay, so it's more pinky than orange? Yeah, yeah. I'd probably do just a smidge of the green then. Yes. I love you. We're in the, yeah. we're, we're like, you know, we're right there together. Yes. Yeah. Because at this point you wouldn't want to add the lilac to neutralize it. You would want to go in with that green so you can kind of cut down a little bit of the warmth. Exactly. Um, good, good, good. Okay. So let's do going to clean off my spatula here and I'm going to take, let's see, there we go. I'm going to take a little bit of the green, just a tiny bit and fix that. The green is not quite as intense as let's say like the red or the brown. There we go. So let's try this one out. Um, it didn't need a huge amount, you know, of, uh, I would say, of change. Ooh, that did change it quite a bit, though. Mm -hmm. uh, just with that little bit of green, look how light it took it. Wow. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on her neck. You can kind of see what it does there because her neck has more uh, yellow and the face has a little bit more pinkiness. So I have a client, I'll tell you, she is, she's a, um, a dear client, but she likes to look translucent. I mean, just take every little ounce of red that I have in my skin out. And I have the craziest custom blend with her. <laughs> she is an O2 Hydrolux with 14 squirts of green. Like uh -huh. it is crazy looking when you see her foundation. Now there's no one else. Usually I don't go over like four pumps of something, you know, for the whole bottle. But in her case, it is crazy. Um, so as you can see, as it's drying, it definitely took that. I don't know if you can, can you see that warmth now? Mm -hmm. Like over here, the warmth and right here, it just like took it all away. Now, if, so if Rachel wanted to look more porcelain, then I probably would just stick to that. If she didn't want to look quite as porcelain, I would probably remix it and put a little less green, you know? But just for the heck of it, let's just try putting this in. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to take the others off and... There we go. And I'm going to grab a new brush because obviously we don't want the one that we had the other foundation on. And I'm going to take a little bit of the foundation. And just blend that. Okay. 
be interesting to see if you can see the the difference between the one foundation and the other. This one's also, like I said, it's a uh, it's a it is a matte foundation, but not quite as matte as the Perfecta base. But it is more like a we do have peptides in the foundation, um, so you are getting more of like a skincare foundation. And take a peek at that now. I don't know if you can see the difference between the one side. I can definitely feel the difference. You can? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this one, they both feel like really light, but this one, I can feel like it has a lot more moisture or something. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, like it feels cool and fresh. <laughs> ah, interesting. Okay, nice. Um. So, and, and you can see too, that even though we neutralized it, you can still see like that natural skin kind of coming through where the Perfecta base just like gave it a very even and uh, higher coverage type of foundation. They're both pretty. Do you guys have a preference? Like which one you like better? The client will let you know, right? <laughs> yeah, which one it is. And I think it just, you know, it depends on the preference and what that person's skin needs. Um, okay, so the next thing you could do. So let's say if her skin just looked like um, a little, well, actually I'm going to use it on this side. So let's say we wanted to take some of that matteness, you know, is that even a word? Matteness. Mm -hmm. I just created a word, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to do a little bit of the, I'm just going to take a little bit of our perfect moisture serum and I'm just going to take a little drop on my palette and I'm going to If we wanted to, you know, kind of get a little bit more of that dewiness, we could also do that too. You can do it on top. You can mix it into the foundation. So there's just all different ways, but it's really great because that way, when you're retailing your product, for example, today we had several people that came in that needed um, foundation. And for example, one of the ladies came in she had her Perfecta base. There was still quite a bit of product in there. And she said, but it's getting too dry. So we just put like, you know, four or five pumps of Perfecta base in there, mixed it up, and it just added all that hydration back in. Um, and so you can charge, we usually charge $5 for the custom blending. So, you know, it's totally up to you, however you want to charge, or some people add it into the price of the foundation because that's kind of like their leeway on, you know, hey, we're going to custom blend it for you. But sometimes people don't need custom blending. They might just receive like the straight uh, color right there. Um, so that's kind of what we have. Uh, let's see. So then the next thing I would do is I would use the concealer on her. And we have a couple of shades with the concealer. So it's gonna be the C2 is the lightest shade that we have. And which obviously is probably the color that I would wanna try. We have um, C3, which is gonna be more yellow. And we have C4, which has a little bit more pink, but you can see here like the, you know, the C2, the lightest shade, the C3, way too yellow on her. Um, C4, this is a really popular shade because it's kind of in between. It's got a little bit yellow, but it also has some pinkiness to it. And so let's try the concealer and doing the concealing. 
So which foundation would you like, Rachel? You get to pick your, which one are we going to custom blend? Oh, you know me. I love like anything glowy to it. Okay. So probably the, probably the... okay <laughs> so we're going to mix the Hydrolex and then I'll show you how we can even add like some of the shimmer in it too. So I'm going to take, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the concealer right into that area. All right, so she is an N1. Any questions so far? Yeah, there we go, great. Good. I'm glad you like the sessions. Um, let me go grab, I'm going to grab a new, let's see here. I'm going to grab a new shade of foundation. Yes. Here. It'll probably be the last one that I grab. Let me see. One. It's gonna be the last one I got. Let's see. <laughs> it's the last one. Okay. So now we know that she is a an N1 plus we added a little bit of green. Now to custom blend her foundation, I um I grabbed a pump of I added a pump of green on the palette. So what I'm going to do is for this whole bottle, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to start with one pump of green in it because there's not an exact ratio, but we go by the pumps of the, of the pigment. So I'm going to grab, and, and if you want to, you could either put a pump on your palette and mix it in, or you can just open up the foundation. So I'm gonna open this up. And I like to, you know, I'll just shake it a little bit. And you can see that there is some space still left in here. For example, the crazy foundation mix that I showed, that I told you about before, that was the 14 like pumps. I have to empty this whole thing out because there is no way that you'll put 14 pumps of green in there. But that's just a weird situation. I don't have any other clients like that. So what I'm going to do is make sure that, so I'm going to put one full pump of the green in here. And I'm going to grab my spatula and here, one second. Our spatulas keep running away. They do. And there's the white one right there. Yeah, that one actually, let's see here. Well, that one fits. Yeah, I can turn it around. That'll be fine. Okay, okay so. I'll just go ahead and turn it around. I'm going to mix the green into here. And you really have to spend a little bit of time just slowly mixing gently the, I've got a little bit of green on the outside. So I'm just gonna kind of grab that, put it in there and just keep on blending it. Try to grab all of the, the product. Now, if I were mixing the Perfecta base, um, because it has a cap with a spatula on it, I like to kind of scrape the spatula and put all of that in the bottle before I custom blend it. Because if not, the spatula is going to keep all of the color that hasn't been custom blended with the pigment. So you kind of want to make sure that you're putting as much product in there together. 
So I'm going to mix this up. Looks like it's looks like it's doing pretty well. And then I'm going to put the cap on it and I'm going to shake it. Because as you can see, the cap, oh, that's the wrong cap. I'll put that one on there. Yeah, let me see. Here it is. There we go. Okay. So the cap still has a little bit of product on there, and it is the uncustom blended product. So I'm just going to go ahead and shake this and make sure that it's just really well blended. Sometimes, you know, when the product, if you keep the cap off or something, sometimes it can get a little stuck in there, which I think one was a little, a little dry. So I want to make sure that for my client, I'm going to grab a tissue um, and I'm just going to pump a little bit out on a tissue. And you have to prime, like you have to prime the pump a little bit. So yes, it is coming out. Because this is, so these are airless pumps. So as you're using up the product, that pump is going, it's going up. So you're getting all of the product that's coming out of the bottle versus the Perfecta Base. You know, that one is more of a traditional bottle. And then you have the cap right there. But this one, you would just mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. So let's try it out. And usually, to be honest, um, what I do is after I shake it to test the product on my client again, I want to, I usually will just open it up. Now you can see there's a little bit of green that just got left on there. I'm gonna wipe that off. Just wanna wipe it clean. Blend that out. Okay. So it's it should take you a couple of minutes. Um, let's actually what I'll do is I'm gonna take off the perfecta base side on her. And that way we can make sure that it looks just as nice. Look at all that pinkiness coming right out of her skin. <laughs> now I'll show you another, um, another one of our products that can be used. It's our skin shimmers. And these can be used in the foundation. They can be used just on the um, skin. They can be used under the foundation or over the foundation. It totally depends on what you, you know, what you want. Okay, so let's try our product. Skin shimmer? No, uh, yeah, let me try the skin shimmer and then the, that's the one that I, okay. I custom blended it on you. So we've got four shades of skin shimmer and the lightest shade is going to be Milky Way, <laughs> which is probably the best shade for her as a highlighter. And this one, as you can see, is has more of like a silvery tint to it. It's so pretty. Yeah, you can apply this with your finger. You can apply it with a brush. You can, you can see like on me, it really, I usually will use uh, either Luna or um, Electra, and I'll show you those as well. But these are so hot right now our skin shimmers. The Electra is going to be in gold. We have Inca, Milky Way, 
Yeah. Electra. Yes. Okay. So Electra is this is a gold shade. So I'll show you this one here. You can see that too. So if you have more warmth in your skin, you can see that would be really pretty. That's kind of like more of like that JLo kind of goldy shade. Um, Inca is a little bit darker. And this one's more like a rose gold. So, oops, sorry. If you wanted to kind of combine and add a little bit, maybe contour on her, you could use a little bit of this too. And that would look, I love this, especially for brides. This is so pretty. And you can use it in the decollete area. You can brush it on. I mean, you can do a bunch of stuff with this. You can mix it in with your moisturizer as well. If you really want like that flawless glowy kind of look, super pretty. Um, let's see here. And I'm going to take the foundation. <laughs> I've got so many foundations in front of me right now, and I thought I pulled it to the side. What did I do with it? It's right here. This one. Oh my goodness. Hello. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I've got a million shades here. Okay. So I'm going to take our brush once again, um, or actually, I'm going to take a Q-tip because I want to test her color. I want to see if I need to add a little bit more green. I think um, I think this shade, it has a little bit more warmth than the other side. Let's let this dry, but I think that this might be, because you know how we really kind of added quite a bit of green to the other side? I think this one is going to look a little bit more natural. Let's see if we can, whoa, look at that. There we go. So you can kind of see it right there on her skin. Now, of course, I put the Inca, so you can really kind of see the, the difference on her. But let me go ahead and I'm gonna mix this with a brush. And then you guys can tell me what you think. So take a little bit of the foundation that I mixed. I like to kind of pat it also on top of the skin shimmers so I'm not wiping them off. And if we want to add a little bit more foundation, then, you know, you can always just build in those areas where if you want some more, you know, if you want to take away, I kind of like all that pinkiness personally. I think it looks really pretty, but if you want to, you could just go back in this area here and just build right in that spot. And just keep it sheer in the other areas because she doesn't really need much coverage. So there you go. See, it kind of took that away. A little bit more flawless there. And I still have a whole bunch from my pump. So again, like less is more. Can you see a difference from like one side to the other? It's kind of hard, right? Might be a little hard. I feel like I when I custom blended the other side, let me just see. I mean, they kind of dried the same. This one might be a little bit more glowy. Um, but I think the shade kind of looks the same. 
and it's like a perfect blend onto her neck. So. Questions, anyone? Mickey, does this look like, um, does this look easy for you to custom blend? Oh yeah. yeah. Is it yeah, less so much than, than, than the last product that you had? Or is it about the same? Oh yeah. A lot easier? No, huge difference, way easier. Oh good. Yeah. Easy is good. <laughs> yeah. So then if, let's say, you know, she's like, oh my God, I just love shimmer. You could add a pump of the skin shimmer in here too. Just open it up. You can add a pump or two. What I like to do though, is I like to sell them the skin shimmer separately, just because that way you have the option. You might not always want to look shim shimmery or um, you can you know, add more shimmer if you want to. I'll show you. Um, so let's say with the, let's say I'm going to do the, I'll, I'll just add a little bit more of the Milky Way. So I'm just going to add a little bit on the back of my, I like to use the angle brush, our little angle brush, because I like to put it right here on the tip. And then I can go back in. I can even do it like on her eyelids. I can take a little bit with my finger also. I've been doing this a lot with our new cream colors that we have. We have a little tutorial out also with the creams that we did on Instagram, if you follow us on Instagram with Rachel and it's so easy. Oh my gosh, clients are loving them. But see how pretty that looks on her eyelid. And then just right there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's better to sell, I think, the skin shimmer in addition to the foundation. Um, and then the last thing that I do is I set in the foundation to, and thank you guys, because we are running a little bit over here. So um, I appreciate it. Um, I personally absolutely love our HD translucent powder. This one, I just kind of spot retouch um, to set in and it is super, super silky. So it's, it's just, it's so pretty. So on, on someone like her, I would just apply a little bit of the powder in those areas where I really want to set it in. And again, I mean, I think that's one of the things that people notice also is that our product goes such a long way. You know, um, you do not need to use a lot of product. And our brushes, they're all made in the US. They will, I've, we have, I have brushes in our car line that I've had for 20 years. Like they, we, and as much as I use my brushes. So the quality is amazing. Um, and there's a lot to be said about, you know, you're investing in your tools, but you want to have nice tools, you know, keep them and, and invest in them because it's, it's what's going to make your application so pretty. So, you know, you can kind of see here, we do have four other powders as well. And, you know, like as a makeup artist, you kind of like get into something and then you kind of, you know, like you, then you come back. And so I've been getting a lot more into our powders again. Um, and because I, I love to do very uh, light, like highlight contour type of thing. So, for example, uh, we have an N2 powder, which is just a translucent, like, fair, you know, fair shade. Um, this is going to give you, it's going to add a little bit more color. Uh, and it also has the texture. It has more weight to it than the HD, but you can also, if you want to get more of that, a little bit more coverage, a little bit more um, set, I would say, than 
the loose powders are beautiful. Um, so we have an N2, we have an N1, which is very, very light. I think that one has a long cap on it. Um, this is the N1, so you can see it's very, very light. I would use the N1 actually um, underneath her eyes, maybe just to set, if I didn't want to use the HD and I wanted to just do like a little bit of like a, a brightness, I'll just take this shade right here. And see how it adds a little bit of brightness right there and it just kind of like sets it in. So definitely play around with our powders because they're very pretty. Um, and, uh, and then also let's see here, this is the BR0. This is again for our bronze series, getting into deeper shades. I'll probably get a model um, in some of these classes, I want to start doing more of these uh, Zoom, you know, complimentary classes so people can learn a little bit more about the product line and whatnot. But if you are interested in learning more makeup artistry as a makeup artist, we have our business and beauty course and we have a bridal course as well. So this is just the bronze. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Just add a little bit of warmth to her face. And it's in a very kind of translucent type of way. And just kind of added like a little bit of contour and a little bit of color. So, you know, you kind of have some choices there versus just, you know. So have some fun. If you haven't played around with like doing highlight and contour just with loose powders, oh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, we always, you know, it's always fun to learn different techniques from different makeup artists. And it, you know, if you're, if you've been around as long as me, like trends aren't new, they just come back. They just call them something different, you know, that's, uh, but you can just play around as like, oh yeah. Or somebody, you know, young will discover like, oh yeah, there's this thing and it's called blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, it might be called that now, but we've been doing that for a, you know, couple of decades. <laughs> so, um, but that is really kind of concluding our um, custom blending class. And do you have any questions? Did it make sense? Is, is this something that, um, was it good? Did it answer your questions? Let's see here. What about questions here? Um, we don't have a schedule yet on our um, when the free sessions will be, but you know, just follow us on Instagram or check your emails, and we'll you'll be able to to get those. So great. And um, let's see here, Mickey, how are you doing? Was this good for you? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Absolutely yes. good. Yes, and I still owe you the um, the invoice for like our best retail. But ask, you know, have you been able to test out your product? You bought the kit. So for those of you guys that um, are watching on the replay and whatnot, here is our foundations kit, and it actually comes with a different uh, a different case, I believe. Um, but it has like all of our foundations. So if you want to be uh, have like a, a foundation, you know, station or start off with custom blending for your clients. It's going to have the skin shimmers in here. It's going to have all the pigments. It's also going to have all the concealers. Um, that's what Mickey purchased. You have all of the, and they're all full size foundations as well. Um, your Perfecta bases, you get all of those. You also get the mineral based compacts. You get a kabuki brush. You get some of the powders as well, and a couple of the brushes and spatulas. So you are set to go, right? And if you, um, and then at this point, like you have all of the testers, or even if you, and you have all the skin shimmers too. 
So even if you needed to custom blend your client, like right then and there, you could even use, you know, try which foundation and then just go ahead and custom blend that bottle if you needed to. Oh yeah, and then we've got the palette. So you've got everything for your little custom blending store. Um, and you can, I don't even know how many applications you could get out of that. Like the, there's just hundreds of them, you know, with all the product. So if you want more information on that, you can definitely send us an email to Cara, um, sorry, sales at caracosmetics.com. Um, go to our website. You can also purchase the kit on there. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, Mickey, any last questions that I can answer for you? Um, no, I think I'm really good. I'm excited. I've been playing with it. Love it. Everybody loves it so far that I've tested it on. So great. Good. So now it's all about making some money. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Fantastic. Well, thank you guys for watching. And um, I look forward to our next session. And again, um, let's see here. What's some other questions? Um, can I use concealer all over the face like foundation? Yes, you can. You can. I do have some clients that they use our concealer as a foundation. So absolutely. Yes, you can. You can definitely do that. Um, and yeah, so men do not look like they wear makeup. Yeah. I mean, I think some guys like to look like they have makeup on. Some guys like to look like it's supernatural. So it's just like women. <laughs> it depends on your taste. So thank you so much. I don't want to keep you waiting anymore. I so appreciate it. Mickey, we'll be in touch and um, have a great week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.